Okay, what you're looking at right here is the uh, US 30 chart. This is the uh, M2 offline charts where we display Renko. And uh, this dotted line, I'm sure you're aware if you know anything about the charts, is what's called the period separator. Uh, and this is the difference between June 8th and June 9th. The uh, US 30 stops trading at three minutes until 5 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, in the afternoon, it's shut down for an hour and six minutes. And then at three minutes after six, it begins trading again. And if you look at the uh, red box that closed right on this uh, dotted line, you can see at 103 is the, uh, is the time that that box opened. So, this is the beginning of uh, the trading day for June 9th, which was yesterday. Uh, what, I, what I did here on this, and I'm just going to walk you through it real fast, it won't take very long, is I, tr I counted out 100 boxes, and then I had a line drawn on the chart, a red line uh, marking where 100 boxes is. Now, when you're counting Rinko, every time you have a box that changes direction, you have to count it twice because it moved. In this case, these are five-point boxes that move five points down. Then it moved five points back in the opposite direction and you know began uh, establishing boxes in the uh, opposite color. So every time you do that, basically you have to count that box twice. So these boxes are all not perfectly sized because sometimes you've had a lot of real choppy price action like this. Boxes are being counted twice uh, routinely. Other times you had just two or three really big moves. Uh, and so those um, segments that are marked off are gonna be a little bit larger. But this is what I want to, I want to show you, okay? This is starting at the beginning of the market on uh, Thursday, June 9th at uh, 6.03 p.m. Okay, there's our first segment. There's our second one. Third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. By the way, here is where uh, the market opened. Uh, at 9.30, the Dow Jones opened. So you're in the 11th box, 1,100 Rinko boxes, basically, before the market even opened at 9.30. Okay, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. Gotta get my, a little more room for my mouse here, sorry. Uh, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, and then we have this little bit right here. I think there's like 16 boxes uh, before we got to the end of the uh, session on Thursday at uh, right before 5 o'clock. 30 boxes, 100 box, uh, 30 segments basically, 100 boxes per segment. That's 3,000 boxes. We have another 16 right here. So you have 3,000 um, five-point boxes, 3,016 five-point boxes. And if you do the math on that, that comes out to um, 15,080 boxes. Or 15,080 points, I'm sorry. 15,080 points off of those 3,000 boxes. All you're trying to do is pick up 100 points. And on yesterday, was it was an average day. It wasn't anything spectacular. The Dow sold off a little bit, but the Dow is constantly selling off or uh, going up, you know, a few hundred points a day. It's not really anything, uh, nothing remarkable happened yesterday. But yesterday being pretty much kind of an average day, you had 15,080 points laying around. All you had to do was pick up 100 of them. So this is why I'm so enthused about trading this particular chart and this chart only. Uh, in an effort to get the 100 points a day, you need to follow the $4,000 uh, uh, a week trade plan. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that just so you can get kind of an idea of, you know, the, the, the work environment you would have if you decide to do this uh, and, and how many opportunities you would have to pick up five or 10 points here and there, uh, 20 points, 30 points in a trade and uh, end up getting your 100 points in a very, very short period of time. So anyway, hope that helps. See you soon. Okay, let's take a look at uh, some trades from a few days ago. This is 19th of um, April. This is the afternoon session. Uh, got a nice sell signal. Uh, you can see right uh, the uh, separation between the lines was pretty solid. Price moved up to about plus 40. Uh, it reverses here and goes back. And when the line starts to cross, uh, giving us uh, you know sort of our exit signal, 
uh, price really kind of jumped a little bit, and so we kind of ate an extra five on that one, uh, which was not, you know, real helpful. But you know, what are you going to do? Sometimes that's how it works out. Uh, so in we hit the reversal button, which is the yellow bar in the upper left-hand corner. Closed the uh, uh, original sell trade, got us immediately into a buy trade. You can see the uh, stop loss has now moved into profit. I'm going to move it up here to plus ten in a second. Uh, just to let you know, uh, coming up, there's going to be kind of a glitch in the video. I actually lost my internet connection for a few minutes and had to wait for it to get restarted and rebooted. So uh, it's just kind of a uh, rather jarring, abrupt um, change in appearance on the charts uh, when that happened. So just so you understand what's going on there. Um, this is a, you know, turns out to be a pretty good trade. What's going to come up next, however, was kind of an embarrassment on my part. Uh, when we get stopped out uh, at plus 10, which is where the stop loss is sitting, uh, we begin to get what appears to be a sell signal. It never really was a sell signal, but that didn't stop me. I jumped in and put the sell trade in anyway. Uh, and you're going to see here in a second that uh, what happens is, is that it never really uh, picks up any kind of steam and uh, ultimately fails and starts moving back up. Now, I uh, closed out the first trade at 20. The second trade closed out at plus 10. I'm up around 30 on that trade. Uh, you can see this is a sell signal. It's not really a real sell signal. You can't really see good separation between the lines uh, heading down right now. They're sort of merged together. Uh, but it does uh, now, in fact, turn around and uh, start moving in the other direction. And what will happen is, is I'm going to end up hitting the reverse button again and uh, closing out the sell trade for about a 15 point loss. And now I'll be in a buy trade. Now the, um, I was of about 30, uh, so I gave back 15. You can see I've already moved the stop loss to break even. Uh, we're in uh, actually pretty good shape on here. Now I got out at this point at about uh, 35. There's the glitch I was telling you about. I lost the uh, internet connection for a little bit. We came back, finally got started, got into a sell trade. Um, and currently sitting just a hair below uh, 50. And normally I go for 50 in a session. That's my my goal. If I can get 50, I've had a pretty good pretty good session. This is trading the US 30, obviously. Um, well, what happens here is price uh, doesn't really cooperate, comes back, stops me out slightly past break even, just enough to cover the spreads and the um, uh, commissions and whatnot. But price moves back down, rejoins the uh, original trade, and we see we get some nice separation on the indicators. I sold one last time, and now you're going to see over the next 20 or 30 seconds, the bottom falls out. This thing dropped about 55 points where I finally got out. So ended up 100 points uh, middle of the afternoon on Friday, the, or on uh, April 19th, rather. Uh, and uh, very simple. Uh, and these this stuff happens pretty much every day, especially in the afternoons on the US 30 and with most everything else that's out there to trade. So it's, it's a good system. It works well.